Hello, Prestige Heads, and welcome to American Prestige. I'm Danny Bessner, here as always with my friend and comrade Derek Davison. And we're here to give you an update on Gaza. But Derek, before we do, I, I wanted to tell you my reading of the situation, and I'm curious what your take is. Um, in retrospect, I think that the reason that in the immediate aftermath of the October 7th attacks, so many U.S. policymakers went there was to do some sort of delay of an Israel ground invasion, a full-scale ground invasion. I think that the administration genuinely doesn't want to be as involved in the Middle East as it uh, the U.S. traditionally has been for the last, you know, 40, 50 years, but on the other hand, is not strong enough to basically actually remove itself. So on one hand, it doesn't want to be involved, but on the other hand, it's not willing to direct policy in a serious way with regards to Israel, because I, I do think the administration does want to avoid a regional war. So I, it just highlights the tensions at the heart of U.S. foreign policy, which is this, on the one hand, desire not to be as heavily involved in the Middle East. This is almost, you know, the blob consensus at this point, focus more on China, which I disagree with, but that's a story for another time. But on the other hand, not willing to basically um, affirm itself over a state that has a clientel relationship with it. I was just curious what you think of that analysis. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of the, the yeah, I think you're, you're probably right in some basic ways. Um, I, I feel like this is the uh, apotheosis of post-Cold War liberalism in the sense that the administration doesn't want to be responsible, but it doesn't for what's happening in Gaza. But it it doesn't want to break ties with Israel and take face criticism for that, um, or you know the repercussions that might follow for policy. Um, it, it it basically wants to get credit for feeling bad about what's happening, and you know trying to kind of ineffectually nudge the Israelis in a less violent direction while not actually doing anything to stop what's happening. It wants to feel good about itself, uh, even, you know, as it's enabling the horrors that are now taking place. And and what's also interesting is that, um, as, as long-time listeners might know, I'm very skeptical of protest's ability to make policy change, particularly in uh, foreign relations, which traditionally is an area that's quite immune to public opinion, however one defines public opinion through polls or through activity at protests. But it does seem like this is genuinely new in the criticism of uh, U.S. foreign policy, at least in, in major centers like, uh, for example, New York and the Grand Central protests. And obviously there have been a lot of international um, protests that are against the Israeli bombardment. So uh, do you think there's anything meaningful going on there, or is it just too early to know, especially given the history of protests not having that much of an effect on U.S. foreign policy, save for maybe Vietnam, but even that's a complex uh, argument to make. Yeah, I mean, I think you can you can see in the reactions of, of people in the Biden administration, in the reactions uh, at, at times of people in the Israeli government, that they're, they're not used to this. They're not ready for this kind of pushback. They don't expect it. Uh, they expect to be able to, you know, release obviously doctored recordings and say, this is two Hamas guys telling us that their headquarters is under a hospital and just have everybody believe it. And when that doesn't happen, they don't really seem to have a plan B. Um, you know, the, the, some of the absurd things that they've, they've tried to get away with and doesn't seem to have really penetrated are things that I'm old enough to remember, uh, you know, a time when, when those things would have been taken as true. The Israelis said it, it must be true. Uh, let's just, you know, operate on that basis. Uh, but you see, even, even when the administration has, uh, you know, said things like, well, we don't believe that many people are dying in Gaza. Like, uh, you know, just uh, what I just, you know, that's, that's a horrifying statement. It, it makes your skin crawl. Uh, it's, it's it, it factually without any basis. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we, I talked to Omar Shakir about this a, few, a couple of days ago. And the, 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 the fact is that Gaza, Gaza and health statistics have been uh, proven to be reliable in, in other conflicts, but, but you still have this kind of lame effort to say, well, we just,